in chapter 625 of the poem of the man God, in one of his many resurrection appearances, Jesus says of Mary the following, You have the living example of how a bosom which receives the word incarnate must be. The example is the woman who without original sin and without personal sin bore me. Look how pure is the summit of the Hermon still enveloped in the veil of winter snow. From the Mount of Olives it looks like a lot of lilies stripped of their petals or like sea foam that rises like an offering against the other whiteness of the clouds blown by the April wind along the blue fields of the sky. Look at a lily that now opens the mouth of its corolla to a scented smile. And yet, both purities are not so bright as that of the womb that carried me. Dust blown by the winds has fallen on the snow of the mountain and on the silk of the flower. Human eye cannot perceive it, so light is it. But it is there, and it spoils the whiteness. Even more, look at the purest pearl taken from the sea, from the shell where it was born, to adorn the scepter of a king. It is perfect in its compact iridescence, that is unaware of the desecrating touch of all flesh, as it was formed in the pearly hollow of the oyster, isolated in the sapphire fluid of sea depths. And yet, it is not so pure as the womb that bore me. In its centre, there is a grain of sand, a very minute corpuscle, but still an earthly one. In her, who is the pearl of the sea, there is no grain of sin, not even of incentive to sin. The pearl born in the ocean of the Trinity to bring the second person to the earth, she is compact around her fulcrum, which is not the seed of earthly concupiscence, but the spark of the eternal love, the spark that found correspondence in her and thus engendered the divine meteor that now calls and draws to itself the children of God. I, the Christ, the morning star, I give you that inviolate purity as example. Just by way of explanation, you see the use of the word Trinity and the phrase second person. And you might think, well, this was the first century AD, Jesus wouldn't use such terminology. That belongs to the later development of Catholic um, doctrine. Not in terms of developing the truth, but developing the language to express the truth. And that's a fair point. But what I've said in a previous video, Jesus, who would probably be speaking Aramaic here, will be utilising a language which would not have the complexity of the Greek language, complexity of words and the complexity of ideas. So what Jesus may be doing here is giving us what he was expressing in Aramaic in, of necessity, a less precise form but what his thought was expressing in absolute clarity in his mind, he's giving us his thought that he was expressing then in a language which is more suited to receive his thought in all its precision. Alternatively, we could say that Jesus did say Trinity and did say second person because Greece had already risen to prominence. The Greek had conquered Palestine. Philo of Alexandria is a famous um, philosopher and speaks of the uh, milieu in which Jewish thinkers were operating, the Greek worldview. So it's perfectly possible that Jesus was using this terminology at the time, but my point is it doesn't matter because what he was saying how he was expressing his thought will of necessity come across differently in different languages. And what we as Catholics know is that Jesus' thought is most perfectly expressed in the dogmas of the Catholic Church. And those of us who have reason, and I hope my videos, my early videos, 
have given reason to believe that Maria Valtorta's um, visions are accurate, are really of Jesus 2,000 years ago and the Apostles and Mary and all the other characters who appear in her work. Believing in the veracity of those visions of Maria Valtorta, one then naturally should believe in the words that are put on the lips of the characters in that work.